Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review. So let us palaver a little bit on Creed's Vetiver Geranium, which is uh, from this Aqua Originalis, or Original line, excuse me. Um, it came out about a decade ago, 2014, and surprise, surprise, it is discontinued. Um, and actually, I think all of the original Aqua Originale line, I know that sounds like a double negative, the original Aqua Originale line, but I think they're entirely discontinued, and Creed has what they called reorganized the line into three fragrances. Um, so all of the originals, like Aberdeen Lavender, Asian Green Tea, Cedra Blanc, and this little bad boy, Vetiver Geranium, are all out, as are some of the other ones, I think. There were more as well. And what they've done is they've decided to replace them with uh, Green Neroli, which takes its precedent from Selection Vert, from my understanding. I've never smelled any of these, by the way. Citrus Bigarad, which um, follows the older Citrus Bigarad. And then Zesty Mandarin, which follows the Zesty Mandarin Pamplemousse that I actually reviewed on the channel. That was a great cap EDT from back in the day. So even Creed pulling out some of their older fragrances and reusing them a la Guerlain style, if you will. But this is one of the originals, and it was created by the great Julian Rasconet, soon to be uh, known as the great. I think he's one of the best kind of modern, uh, new age perfumers, let's call them. You know, not from the old school, right? Um, not of the Jean-Claude Elena and Pierre Bourdon generation, but the new generation of perfumers. Um, and I really, I have to say though, I really don't like this sort of hyper consumerism thing where if it doesn't sell, they just chunk it and go with something else. You know, sometimes you have to have a, you have to say, I'm putting this out and I, and as a brand, I know what's best for people because I'm Creed and, you know, we know where quality and elegance lie, not just follow the whims of every 18 year old with a couple of grand in his pocket. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like they should kind of stick to the plan a little bit more, but they don't. They just toss stuff aside and go with something else, which is what happened here. Um, so this is an interesting one, though, because this is one of the few fragrances in my life that I actually owned a bottle of back in the day. Because if you know my backstory, I kind of started out heavy in the fragrance game, um, just buying all of the high-end stuff. So creeds, amouages, I, I mistakenly, and I will admit my, my mistake, I mistakenly... Uh, equated price with quality, as many people who I think go into the fragrance game early on do. They look for the highest price stuff and think, oh, I'm getting the absolute best thing I can get because I'm spending a lot of money. Not always the case, especially not in the fragrance world where there's lots of smoke and mirrors. Um, so this is one of the fragrances that I actually used to own, one of the few fragrances that I used to own that I had a bottle that I no longer had a bottle, so I can't show you the bottle any longer. But the reason I'm telling you the story is because I... Uh, have more experience with it than this little decant. And I have to say thank you to David, who very kindly sent me this decant, along with some cigars to appreciate. Um, so he sent me a very generous 5ml decant of Vetiver Geranium. And um, why I don't have the bottle anymore is an interesting story, because I bought it when it first came out in 2014. And I remember thinking at the time, I'm just going to wear a Ventus, you know? Like, of course, because that, you know, who, who didn't want to wear a Ventus in 2014? Um, and, and I, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try and act cool. And I gave this to the girl that I was seeing at the time, stupidly gave it to her. Uh, now I wish I had my bottle back. She, she was good looking, but not good looking enough for a free Creed fragrance. I'll tell you that. Um, so I stupidly gave it to her. And now that I have, this was long before I ever thought of having a YouTube channel, but now I wish I had this back in my collection so I could show you guys the bottle. Um, plus it would be a cool, I like collecting discontinued fragrances, so I think it would be a cool piece to have, but alas, it is long gone. Um, and I remember being shocked that she actually knew what Creed was even when I gave it to her. But, um, anyways, me trying to impress a girl a decade ago like an idiot, and I lost my Creed Vetiver Geranium. But thanks to the kindness and the generosity of the community, here we are with another uh, opportunity to review it on the channel. So, so as I say, my point in telling that very sad backstory is that um, I wanted to say I have more experience with this fragrance than just what the decant shows, and um, this fragrance was basically uh, created by Julian Rasconet, uh, who I did not know, of course, he was the perfumer when I owned the bottle a decade ago, but um, this fragrance is really off the beaten path for Julian Rasconet. If you blindfolded me and said, who's the perfumer here, Ramsey? Julian Rasconet would be like one of the last names I ever thought of to create. 
this type of perfumery. Maybe he really relished the opportunity to do something else. And back in the day, they were ghost perfumers for Creed, if you will. So their names weren't supposed to be released. So he probably enjoyed being a little bit of a, of, you know, like, um, penning something under a different name or something where his name wasn't tied to it. So there were no expectations. He could do something different. Um, so I just found that very interesting, if you will, because it isn't his usual Middle Eastern style. You know, it's it's nothing like what you would expect from a Julian Raskin A creation. So this is much closer to me to something like Geranium Pour Monsieur meets Terre de Hermes, the biggest bottle of Terre de Hermes you've ever seen. There's Geranium Pour Monsieur. There's Terre de Hermes. Uh, Terre de Hermes is like, fuck you, Geranium Pour Monsieur. Um, and uh, then also I've heard some folks uh, d compare it to Guerlain Homme, but you get the idea. It's fresh, uh, minty, uh, earthy, maybe because of the vetiver kind of thing. But fresh is is kind of the is the main name of the game here. Citrusy and fruity is really how it opens up, and it's interesting because this opens up with this very crisp, almost like a huge wallop of crisp green Granny Smith apple, specifically green Granny Smith apple at the top. Um, and Creed was on a roll back then, playing with these fruity notes at the top. Of course, the one everyone talks about is Aventus with their pineapple, but this also had an apple note. But the apple note in the earlier batches to my nose, because remember, I've had many different versions of Aventus, many different batches of Aventus, and I still have probably four or five bottles of Aventus, all sometime between the years of 2014 and 2017. But I had bottles going back to 2012, 2013, and so forth and so on. And, um... That apple note in the in the earlier batches was much more. It was much redder. It was like a redder apple, and it was and it was much more prominent than the later batches, to my nose. But Creed did it with Aventus. There's an apple note in Aventus. There's an apple note in Spice and Wood, which I'll review one of these days. I've got just enough juice to review it for you guys. Still, um, there is a um, sort of uh, almost like decaying weird fruit note in Aesir Aluminum, and that's going back to one of the very early Creed's. Um, so this tactic of using sort of fresh, you know, Creed's calling card is freshness. Freshness and easy to wear for a niche fragrance brand that's kind of rare to see, but very high quality ingredients and extreme amounts of freshness and easy to wear kind of thing, right? Um, and so using this popular Creed tactic, Creed sticks with what is tried and true in this Aqua Originale line. Um, and so one of the reasons that the fruit note works so well in Creed fragrances is because they focus on the fresher side of the fragrances. So here, the first 10 to 15 minutes are really dominated by these beautiful citrus notes, okay? So you basically get two citruses, bergamot and lemon. And um, the bergamot comes off slightly metallic um, and, of course, citrusy. And it almost feels like you took this clean sheet of metal and just made like a crease in it, okay? And the reason that crease is there is because half of the crease reflects light this way, half of it reflects light this way, because this fragrance kind of goes down two paths and then merges back together again is the way it works. So the crease in the metal, basically, you follow the light going on one side of, of the reflection on the metal, and you're basically led down the path of Terre Hermes, okay? You're led down the path of Terre. Uh, you could you could murder somebody with this bottle, by the way. This is actually really heavy. Um, this is a 500 mil, and this is an actual sprayer. This is not a factice. This is actual juice in here. Uh, they don't make these 500 mil bottles anymore, but I'm glad to have got my hands on one. Um, I think that's cool. I think that's just cool as hell. But um, yes, the bergamot feels metallic, and the crease on one side kind of leads you down that Terre de Hermes because of the metallic bergamot, almost recreates some of the like mineralic touches in here. There's no bitter orange in vetiver geranium. Instead, there's that Granny Smith apple. Uh, but it does feel slightly earthy. Some of the vetiver does kind of leak up in from the um, from from the base because vetiver is in the base here, and it gives off just little bits and pieces of earthiness. It's nowhere near as earthy as Terre de Hermes. Okay, but. Um, it never gets anywhere near as earthy, but it, it gives you enough earthiness to where you can at least kind of pick it up. Now, later on, you'll notice that there's a tandem of notes working with the vetiver to give off some of that earthiness. But for now, we'll stick with the vetiver giving off a little bit of that earthy combination. Now, uh, vetiver geranium basically starts off with this very acerbic combo of apple and citrus notes. Okay, so it feels like there is a second or third citrus or fruit involved as well. So when you smell it, 
Sometimes that combination of apple and bergamot with lemon makes you feel like you're smelling something like a lime note. There's this lime, um, there's almost like this alcoholic lime, and that's why I think some people think about Guerlain Ohm when they think about vetiver geranium, because um, there is like a mojito note here, and that's that's not listed. But um, sometimes it gives off this lime thing. Sometimes it gives off this sweet and sour combination that you'll get when you smell grapefruit. And so again, I know Jean-Claude Elena loves using bitter oranges and grapefruits and stuff like that. So, and maybe that's just my brain connecting it with things like tear, but, um, and also maybe it's just my brain using that very crisp texture of the Granny Smith apple with that lime green outer skin on a Granny Smith apple. You know, Granny Smith apples are, are known for their kind of bitter type, type taste. And so if you just think of the image of this fruity, acidic, Granny Smith apple, um, and if you just imagine that uh, very early on you start to get what I think, my, my two cents on it, is that it's the Creed in-house ambergris DNA, okay? That Creed claims it's real ambergris, other people claim no, it's salty ambroxan Creed spiced up to make smell like ambergris, you know the, you know the back and forth between those who love Creed and those who hate Creed. But either way, let's just call it the in-house ambergris accord, if you will, starts to come through. And that ambergris accord kind of makes everything sparkle a little bit. It makes it feel very fresh. It makes it sparkle. Um, and one thing I will say is it adds a little bit of sourness to an already slightly sour opening because of that Granny Smith apple, okay? So it's like double dose of sour in, in an effect. Um, and I think Creed realize that to some extent because the fragrance starts to make a little bit of a course correction like they start to try and um almost like fix almost like they you know you create you create a formula or something and they put the formula to work they smell it and they kind of cross something out and write something else is what it feels like in here because to me some folks say this fragrance is too sour and other folks say i don't pick up any of the sourness i get like these sweet notes in in, in the top and I think what ended up happening is Creed built this formula and um, basically they said, you know what, it's too sour, we need to add some sweet notes. And they went in the exact opposite direction. And I wish they would have almost just rolled with the punches and allowed that sour ambergris to kind of come through with the sour apple. I think it would have been better because I think when they added some of these sweeter notes in here, I think they overdid it. I think they overcorrected, in my opinion. And... It makes it seem a little bit weird. I think it's weird for different reasons than other people I've heard talk about this fragrance think it's weird. You know, some people say the sour apple gives it a weird note. I, I think the sour apple is actually a good note to use, but I wish they would have just allowed it to be sour. Instead, they tried to almost make it like a sweet apple smell. They tried to like properly recreate that bitter crunch of Granny Smith apple and and mix it with something sweet so instead it's almost like you're smelling this blend of like a sweeter green apple like for example what's a green apple type like um green delicious apples or something is that even an apple type i think it is um from memory i think it's one of the sweeter green apples uh and and imagine you're you're tasting like a sweeter green apple mixed with the more sour granny smith apple okay and and that's the part that makes it weird to me personally because that sweetness comes through and I wish they would have just rolled with the punches and allowed it to be slightly sour, like some of the old creeds where they just kind of let the ambergris stand alone, you know? But they nowadays, they feel like they can't do that, I don't think. But um, So the fragrance, I do think, starts to turn a little bit weird, but it gets a little bit of a save, you know? It's kind of is saved by itself because um, the transitions begin within the first hour. And specifically, between 30 minutes to 60 minutes, you're going to notice some, some transitions here. And the reflection of the metal sheet that I mentioned earlier uh, that starts feeling bifurcated going from left to right and back again. And, and what I mean by that is like, first you get the citrus fruits, you're going in this direction. So, you know, you've got that metal sheet with that crease in it and it's reflecting some light over here and some light over there. And now you get the second side of the split. And this is where the fragrance starts heading into this geranium pour monsieur type direction for me because around the one to two hour mark. Now, I need to say though, real quick, it's nowhere near as minty as Geranium Pour Monsieur. That's one of the most important things to point out. Dominique Ropion really focused on the mintiness here, but the Geranium basically adds this rosy, slightly spicy, 
um, like minty freshness, if you will, which feels like a harbinger of things to come with Creed later on. It feels like this fragrance, geranium uh, or vetiver geranium, influenced things like Viking, which I love this so much. I ran through an entire 100 mil bottle of the original Viking, not Viking Cologne, which is shite, but uh, the original Viking. Um, and this just came out a couple years later. This was 2017, this was 2014. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was inspired by this. And the reason I say that is that, um, you know, the mintiness that starts to come through from the geranium feels like a rough draft of what they ended up working on with Viking. This feels like a weird modern neo-fougere. This feels like a weird modern neo-fougere, whatever you want to call it. Uh, modernized fougere. Fougere for the 21st century. I don't know. But um, the geranium definitely feels slightly green smelling in nature. Like you're smelling like a bushy, like a geranium bush that's just grown wild. You know, it's bushy, it's green, and it really hits and starts merging with the rest of the notes. And it has this velvety smooth texture as it begins to um, dry down. This velvety smooth texture. Like imagine picking a, a flower off of a, like a petal off of a flower, okay? So like um, I picked, a, I, have a, I have some beautiful roses that I bought from Costco this weekend and I picked one of the petals and when you pick them and they're still kind of fresh, you know, not when they get hard and crinkly, but when they're still kind of fresh and malleable and, um, you know, just imagine like feeling this petal, right? Um, and what the petal feels like, like the smooth texture of a flower petal. How would you describe it? Velvety? Um, what else would be a descriptor for velvety? I can't think of anything else. Maybe like soft and fuzzy, you know, like, um, like imagine this, like maybe like a little fuzzy feel from the petal, soft and fuzzy might be a good way to describe it but it has this rosy undertone. And there is rose in this as well. I don't want to give the impression there's not, but it, geranium is in the name. And I think the geranium adds to the rosy feel that you're smelling, okay? So at first, I don't think you'll understand why this fragrance is called vetiver geranium. Some folks have said they should flip those around. It should have been geranium vetiver. But when that is the way that the notes hit you, it actually is geranium and then vetiver. But it's called vetiver geranium. Um, and, and at first, I even saw some reviews where they're like, Where's the vetiver? Where's the geranium? I, I don't understand. But, um, you know, you're going to get that citrus apple combo first. Then this rose cinnamon patchouli thing starts to come through. And if you give it time, you'll notice that the geranium adds this sort of like minty freshness to it. Okay. But not, it hints at um, kind of some of the work that Ropion did, but it doesn't go anywhere near that toothpaste heavy, you know, mintiness that you get in geranium pour monsieur. Um, at least I get this toothpaste heaviness, which I, it's not that I dislike it, but I definitely get this heavy toothpaste feel from Geranium Pour Monsieur. Um, and, you know, it, um, it, it just adds hints of freshness and floral, uh, velvety floral starts to come through. And it's a very, very smooth operator. You know, this is a this is a fragrance that's a, that to me is a very smooth operator fragrance, very masculine, but very smooth operator. So now I think Julian Rasconet probably really enjoyed making uh, velvet. I can't even remember the name, vetiver geranium. Now um, I think that Julian Rasconet really enjoyed creating it because it's not the type of fragrance he usually gets commissioned for, you know, it's, there may be parts of the fragrance in here if you really let your brain kind of wander where you could say, okay, Julian Rasconet's fingerprints, with the cinnamon and amber accord, maybe something he's used to doing. And, and um, you know, those two notes are very moderately dosed, very carefully, very moderately dosed, the cinnamon and the amber, um, the ones he's probably most n used to using. Uh, they're dosed almost the slightest in this fragrance. And, and I would also add this amber accord here sometimes, for those of you who care about this information, sometimes the amber accord feels like a much softer version of the much harder core Amber Accords that he's known for later on. So I haven't really heard anyone else talk about this, but the Amber Accord in the bass here, um, you know, just a word of caution, it doesn't start to smell like Amber Extreme or anything like that, but it feels like a more elegant, softer version of his hardcore Amber Extreme Ambers that come later on. Like if you watched my review of something like Encore, I'm sorry, Enclave by uh, Amwaj, which Julian Raskiné did, and I've got a review on the channel based off of a decant. Um, if you watched my review of Enclave, that thing has a giant Amber Extreme note in the bass. Um, and, and this, 
I think if you pay attention, even though it's a Creed and even though it's posh and even though it smells very expensive and all that stuff, you can pick out a little bit of those amber woods, but he used them so elegantly here. Like he was very, very careful, you know? Like Olivier Creed was like, I'll ruin you, boy, if you use more than one drop. And he was like, yes, master, you know? Um, I can just see Olivier Creed like up in a castle laughing maniacally as Julian Rasconet is bolted to the dungeon and forced to create fragrances for him. <laughs> that's a that's a hell of an image right there. But second part of the name, the vetiver. So the vetiver remains in the background. Um, and I was expecting the vetiver to add this hardcore earthy element to the dry down. And you know what? When you, when you first spray along with some of the citruses, which are beautiful. I mean, Creed does citrus fragrances masterfully, okay? They are fantastic for summer heat. It's a little bit cloudy outside. Maybe that's why um, the, the light is not really shining through today, but it's cloudy outside because we're getting some of the tropical storm barrel or whatever the hell the name of this one is. Um, uh, we're getting a little bit of the outer bends of, of the hurricane that just made landfall in Houston today up in, up in Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, or last night it made landfall and we're kind of getting some of the outer band, some of the winds and stuff like that. Um, but it's really nothing more than just rain all the way this far north in Texas. Um, but on a hot summer day, these Creed, and even on a day like today where it's in the 80s, 70s at night, 80s in the day, it's not getting up super high. Um, these work beautifully. I mean, they're great for business events, professional events, events where maybe you're meeting a girl and you want to make a proper first impression. You want her to know you're not like everyone else. You're not wearing Sauvage and bleh de Chanel and all that shit. You could wear something like this and make a great first impression. Um, they're, they, the earthy elements, though, I expected to really so come out more. You know, um, I remember the scent from wearing it from my bottle, but I don't remember some of the details and re-wearing it from the decant. Uh, and it is my scent of the day, by the way, today. Um, I expected the vetiver to kind of add some of those earthier elements. And you know what? It's funny because the patchouli seems to like moonlight for the vetiver. Like it's the patchouli that actually comes through and feels like it's adding more of the earthy elements from time to time. And the vetiver comes through slightly spiced, spicy, peppery, slightly oily, but very, very fresh, like a green grassy vetiver, not like a hardcore, you know, not encre de war, not like an inky dark swampy vetiver it's not that at all this is a very clean professional dressed up vetiver and many people don't get the vetiver because it's so buried but it's there it's definitely there um it's just very elegantly dosed okay so i mean i don't know what to say i mean i guess you could say the vetiver and the patchouli like work in t tandem or tag team this earthy dry down Raskine loves using patchouli here i think he just made it a bit too strong i think they course corrected that sour apple slash sour bergamot or sour um, or you could say sour bergamot as well, but sour uh, ambergris type feel in the opening. And I think they course corrected the earthiness to go too far into the vetiver a little bit. But Raskine was a much younger perfumer back then. I would be curious to see what he would do today. You know, after a decade of making fragrances now, since this has come out, how he would attack a fragrance like this today, you know? That would be a hell of an assignment for him. Um, but, you know, it's a twist on a modern masculine. I mentioned some fragrances that work great in the heat. I'll review Guerlain Ohm. Uh, this is the O. Oh, this is the intense version, which they drop. They don't make the intense version anymore. They call it just Eau de Parfum, and it's supposed to be the same thing. But this version is no more. Of course, Guerlain loves changing things up. But um, I'll review this one of these days. I'll review this one of these days before the summer's out, hopefully. Um, but these are just great fragrances to wear in, in the heat. And even on cloudy days like today, where it's not as hot, it still works beautifully. So most people, you know, talk shit about the longevity. Oh, I get two hours and stuff like that. And you know what? It's, it's a creed, okay? You're not wearing an amouage. Um, you're not wearing interlude 53 or anything like that. But it's, it's, it's a, it's a freshy, but I think it's a strong freshy. I mean, I think there are some, I don't want to say, um, I don't want to say that, I don't want to make it seem like it's beast mode or anything like that, because it's not, but I get a good five to seven hours, let's say, you, a good work day, okay? Maybe by the end of the day, you won't smell it anymore, but you'll get most of a work day if you're the kind of person that doesn't, you're not crazy like me and bring a decant to work so you can reapply and all that stuff, um, then I think this will get you through the work day. So, would I buy this now in 2024? No. I would not, uh, especially since I saw bottles between $350 and $1,200. The person with, at, with a 
bottle up on eBay for $1,200 can fuck right off uh, with that. But um, do I wish I still had my old bottle back? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Um, and I, um, I, I, I wish I had my old bottle back. I mean, I think I paid like 150 bucks for it or something at the time when you could find creeds at a great deal from time to time. Um, so, so yes, I mean, that's kind of where I sit with Vetiver Geranium, a Julian Rascone creation from 2014 that is sadly discontinued, but I love talking about these discontinued scent and, and, you know, doing these videos on fragrances that most people have forgotten about. And you know what? There is a never ending supply. Let's try this again. There is a never ending supply of these type of fragrances to discuss. So again, thank you, David, for your generosity and sending this decant over. Really appreciated getting to know a scent that I once knew and um, revisiting it for the channel. So if you have experience with Vetiver uh, Geranium, do let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure doing these videos for you guys. Um, happy I just dropped my 9,000 subscriber celebration video, which took all night to upload, by the way. So YouTube is on, on the rocks. But, uh, but we're finally uploaded, and um, life is good. So thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers, guys. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.